Across all history, the truly strong remain shrouded deep in darkness, hidden from society. They carefully erase all traces of their existence so that when later generations look back on history, it is as if they were never there. But sometimes, even the most perfect plans to erase one's tracks leave unexpected loose ends. This tome was one of those loose ends, left behind in charred ruins. What secrets lie within? Zasalamel created me. A banal way to begin a tome. But writing down one's own history in a book is strange enough to begin with. I began writing this as an indulgent pastime, so I may as well enjoy myself. Now, about the cursed sword known as Soul Edge, I intend to record its secrets in this very tome. However, I must exercise caution. A fitting end awaits all who seek the cursed sword. Some may laugh and call this an exaggeration. Should anyone who has held that sword ever read this tome, though, I'm certain they'll agree with me. The origin of Soul Edge is a mystery. Legend says it was once an ordinary sword, void of any power. But after fighting on countless battlefields, it gathered a great deal of negative power until a curse fell upon it. That much is true. All who took Soul Edge in their hands became slaves to the blade, murdering until they bled their last drop of blood. That is why so few know of it, despite its appearances time and time again throughout history. Until, that is, an age long past, when there appeared a man with a mind powerful enough to resist the sword's control. He was known as the Hero King. In that ancient age, great change came only through war. Thus, controlling Soul Edge meant ruling the world. The Hero King, being the man he was, one could say it was inevitable that he would bring peace to this warring world. I won't record the Hero King's name here. Someday I may decide the time is right to reveal it, but that time isn't now. It is said the Hero King lost Soul Edge due to his jealous son. After the Hero King killed his son, the Spirit Sword Soul Calibur was born from the remnants of the Cursed Sword. Indeed, the Cursed Sword and the Spirit Sword both come from the very same steel. While the name Soul Edge is known to a select few, the name Soul Calibur is known to almost no one. There is a reason the Spirit Sword was never revealed to the world. Some say the Hero King created the Spirit Sword, but the truth is that the Hero King risked his life and failed. Those who would carry on the Dead King's wish and perfect Soul Calibur were to come later. They were known as the Guardians of the Spirit Sword. Like a thief in the night, they took the Spirit Sword and withdrew into the dark recesses of history. They told others of the Hero King's Spirit Sword, and that they were going into hiding to both prevent Soul Calibur from being used for evil, and to prepare for the threat of Soul Edge. The Guardians of the Spirit Sword only entrust Soul Calibur to a select few. One recent example was a king from medieval Europe. Born in Britain, the king used the Spirit Sword to rule a large swath of Europe. 
I'm skeptical as to whether the king ever truly existed. But assuming the tales are true, he was somehow connected with the guardians of the spirit sword from whom he received the blade. Also, it would be reasonable to assume the king fought with the one who possessed the cursed sword and won. After the king's death, though, no one knows what happened to the spirit sword. Perhaps we should assume it eventually found its way back to the guardians of the spirit sword. But it should be noted that their power had dwindled greatly by that time. At the same time, there were those who awaited the second coming of the king. On the eve of the king's passing, a loyal knight set forth to find the spirit sword and restore the crown. That was the start of the secret society known as the Aval Organization. They hid themselves well for a considerably long period of time. Not even I learned of their inner workings until quite recently. Sworn to the late king, the Aval Organization sought the Spirit Sword and secretly assassinated all whom they deemed outsiders, those who were aligned with the Cursed Sword or did harm to humankind. A deeper look, however, reveals there was some unrest hidden below the organization's seemingly unshakable exterior. After slumbering in the shadows of history, Soul Edge was awakened by the pirate Cervantes de Leon. Cervantes attacked the ship of one who had won Soul Edge at an auction. He stole the cursed sword and became its puppet. Soul Edge changes its form depending on its wielder. When Cervantes took up the cursed sword, it transformed into two blades. And after nearly 30 years of slumber, it caused that terrible catastrophe. Cervantes and the Cursed Sword were defeated by a female warrior, and one of the blades was destroyed. Shattering without coming in contact with the Spirit Sword was a first for Soul Edge. Immediately afterwards, the evil seed occurred. The evil within Soul Edge was unleashed upon the entire world. Why did the evil seed occur? What havoc did it wreak where it landed? Not even I have any way of discerning this. But one thing is certain. Ever since that day, the cursed sword's malfested kin have been swiftly multiplying. What does it mean to be malfested? It's extremely hard to define, for the resulting phenomena are so varied. There are those who undergo monstrous transformations, while others look no different from ordinary humans at first glance. In addition to humans, some animals have experienced transformations as well. Common traits of the malfested include heightened fighting instincts and violent tendencies. Some become beasts hungry only for slaughter while others use strategy to entrap powerful foes. But they all slip into towns and cities, seeking blood under the cover of darkness. Some time after the evil seed, the Azure Knight Nightmare appeared. Rumors said he possessed Soul Edge, and his string of indiscriminate murder seemed to agree with this. Personally, I was also interested in discovering this knight's true identity. I then received news that the Aval organization had encountered him and were defeated. It intrigued me that there seemed to be someone in their organization deeply interested in the evil seed. While Soul Edge has appeared constantly throughout history, Soul Calibur's whereabouts are still shrouded in mystery. In time, 
I lost interest and gave up trying to search for any traces of it. But after resuming my search later, I found that it had been taken to a temple in the east at some point. With it were taken a staff able to absorb all manner of energy and a mirror capable of purifying evil. These sacred treasures were used to create soul caliber and amplify its power. No one knows what had happened to the guardians of the spirit sword, but they must have met with ruin, losing the spirit sword and their other treasures. As for the temple, it later became Ling Sheng Su, a famous martial arts dojo that worshipped the spirit sword and the other weapons as the three sacred treasures. But now the spirit sword is no longer there. The evil sea deeply affected Ling Sheng Su and most likely caused it to attract evil energy. Its martial arts students were soon overcome by madness and battle lust and ended up killing each other. The temple fell in a single night. Therefore, no one knows what happened to the spirit sword. Only one student of Ling Sheng Su survived. While the survivor didn't possess Soul Calibur, there was clearly merit in looking into him. What powers did he possess? What could he accomplish? I was deeply intrigued. started writing this tome as a pastime, but in order to give it a clear perspective, I must reveal my identity. I was once one of the Guardians of the Spirit Sword. The precepts of the Guardians were very strict, one of which stated no Guardian may ever touch Soul Calibur, but in my younger days, I failed to properly suppress my urges. When the others discovered my designs, they broke my arms and banished me. Amid my despair, I searched for a way to survive. What I discovered was the art of reincarnation. After a long period of training, I mastered the secrets contained within this lost wisdom. I reincarnated myself over and over again and became an entity that could transcend generations. At first, I didn't realize the price I would have to pay for eternal life. For every time I reincarnated, I experienced the pain of death. It felt like my soul was being crushed. It is hard to put such pain and suffering in words. Indeed, I hadn't managed to completely escape death. No matter what one may accomplish in life, death remains inescapable. My bodies have lain in countless graves, but my soul will never rest in peace. So it was that I came to yearn for the final eternal death I could never have and such desire began to corrupt my everlasting life. Gradually, I began to seek out death itself. That was a thousand years ago. My desire for death was at its peak. That longing for true death led me to even take hold of Soul Age. Wisdom, power, battle lust. In those days, I felt I could do anything. But when it was over, I was forced to confront just how prideful I had been. As a puppet of the cursed sword, I kept fighting to my last breath. And for what? I fought in an age of endless war that spanned the world, all to establish a certain dynasty. That is all I'll say on the matter. 
I've lived as every type of person. Old, young, man, woman. But I've never felt as much joy as when I wielded that power. However, not even the cursed sword could free me from the chains of Samsara. And so I died and was born again into this world.